Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Money News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week, I saw this interesting post from Greg from LaserBear. He has a top loading NES, sort of the back piece where the multi out is. Normally, if you're gonna do the NES RGB to a top loading NES, you can swap out these um, 3D printed plates in the back. So it's sort of a no cut mod to do the NES RGB in a top loader. It looks like Humble Bazooka found a filament that color matches with the top loader's top shell piece. So it's kind of interesting that this filament will blend in with the same color as the top of the top loader. If you're curious to know what the actual filament is, it is Polymaker Polyterra Muted White. This is a Polyterra PLA filament. So if anyone has a normal 3D printer and you want to print in PLA to color match your NES top loader, then Polymaker makes a semi-color matching filament for that. Next, it looks like Stanislav has finally designed the B board for his Sega Genesis HDMI mod. About a month ago, we saw the A board for this mod. So this mod eventually will be a two piece internal HDMI mod for the Genesis. But this now is the B board, which has the rest of the components that were missing from the A board. And somehow they're going to connect with a flex cable. This board, it looks like it's gonna be on the top and the A board is gonna be underneath. I think this is gonna be a pretty interesting project, even though we know now that it is going to emulate some of the VDP functionality. I think it'll be a good first internal HDMI mod for the Sega Genesis. We have another small update from X-Rider. This time it is a working X-Station prototype. Rama and X-Rider are working together to create this updated X-Station PCB prototype. Let's just watch the video here. So here is a picture of the actual X-Station PCB prototype in the top of a PlayStation 1. There is a quick look at an updated QSB that goes on the underside of the PlayStation 1. There was already an X-Station QSB that goes on the underside, but this looks like a little bit of an updated QSB. I wonder if it's gonna be somehow easier to solder than the original X-Station QSB. And it looks like the rest is just loading some games from the X station on this PlayStation 1. So pretty interesting that this prototype is working, but we still don't have any information about whether or not this is going to be the new X station going forward, or if this is just kind of a side project. Next, we have some more photos from Citrus 3000 PSI about the PS2 Digital. These are some photos of the flex cable installed on both a PS2 Slim and a Fat. I'm not sure which way they go around. I think maybe the Fat is on the left and Slim is on the right. One interesting thing is that Dan is not sure if the fat or slim PS2 products are going to be more, which one is gonna be more popular. So I think that he has, he's basically forced to make both and provide support for both, which is going to be kind of difficult on their end, I think. I think to me personally, I like the look of the fat. It just, I have a lot of nostalgia for that console. And I think it's probably the easier one to add mass storage to for saving games on. Although I really don't know that much about modding a slim other than the couple of things I've seen recently. If this is all the soldering that is involved for installing a PS2 digital, then I don't think it's gonna be that difficult of a mod to install. I say that, you know, I don't have one and I don't know what it actually looks like really up close, but this may be a little bit difficult if you have a hard time installing flex cables too. So I, for one, I'm really excited to have a PS2 digital. I think it's going to be an awesome year for PlayStation 2 mods. Well, I was gonna mention that Turbo EverDrive Pros are now on sale, but they're currently out of stock, which is a little bit frustrating. Actually, I think that they are also listed on Stone Age Gamer, but I'm not sure by the time you watch this video, there's gonna be any stock there either. So that's really unfortunate. I only release these videos once a week, so unless a mod is literally like the day before and I get it at the just perfect time, a lot of these more popular mods, the mods that I think are gonna sell out, will sell out by the time I can actually include the release information in my video. But I do still retweet them on Twitter, so if you would like to stay up to date on when things come back in stock and you really need up to date um, minute by minute, I guess, information about when things release so that you can try to grab things, then follow me on Twitter. I always retweet things like this so that people will have their chance to order these uh, sought after mods. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about this new Wii HDMI mod from Electron Shepard and Voltar's been covering it and actually he released the video today. So if you haven't seen that, go check out that video. I actually wanted to mention that the mod kits themselves are in stock too. Hopefully by the time you watch this video, they'll still be in stock. Since Voltar is one of the only people that has a RetroTank 4K prototype right now, he uploaded these side-by-side -side sort of images between the all digital HDMI mod on the left 
and the analog from component on the right here. So these pictures are coming from, I assume, the same Wii console. Both of them are going into the RetroTrain 4K and upscaled to whatever the 4K is gonna do, probably 4K or whatever. But this is a really interesting picture that demonstrates some of the differences that we might see in certain consoles going forward between all digital consoles and analog conversions. Now, I don't really know what's going on between the colors between these two because the HDMI mod on the left, it looks like you can actually see red in that, um, oh, I guess it's a, a flame or something in a pillar on the left. And on the right is this like poop brown <laughs> colored flame. I didn't even know that was a flame until I saw the one on the left. And if you look at the stage one text in the bottom, you can see a lot of like blending of colors in the component video versus the all digital solution on the left. Now I wanna make it clear that I'm not gonna make any like final judgments until I have the product in my hands, the RetroTank 4K. I'm assuming a lot of things here. I'm assuming that these are from the same console and I'm assuming that the way that the RetroTank 4K handles the digital side is similar to how it handles the component side. I don't know, there's just a lot of variables there. It's possible that maybe Mike has some tuning to do with the component or analog video input maybe the colors can be changed so that they're going to more accurately represent each other. But I think what's probably true is that these issues are going to be at a like per console basis. So this might not affect every single type of console in the same way where the colors are gonna be worse for analog than the digital. But I still wanna make a prediction that as we get to the higher and higher line multiplication modes for 4K, 8K, that we will probably get unavoidable noise anyways from analog input signals. I don't know if there's an amount of filtering that can be done on the analog input side to reduce things like that blurring in the text there versus the digital on the left. I mean, leave me a comment. Which of these Wii images do you think is better? I, again, ignore the color differences. I think Voltar mentioned that it has something to do with how the Wii generates component video output, but do you think that we're gonna be able to get there with the high line multiplication modes with an analog input source? Let me know in the comments below. And for the big story this week, we have a very interesting post from Conrad Beckman. That name sounds familiar. Is there something else that Conrad Beckman made? Anyways, that, that name sounds familiar. Anyways, it says that this is an N64 digital HDMI converter using a Raspberry Pi Pico. So it looks like this is sort of an HDMI mod for the N64 using nothing but a Raspberry Pi Pico. But there's a little thread here where Conrad actually talks about the Raspberry Pi Pico is actually taking input, DVI input, into the Raspberry Pi Pico and then it's able to quickly I don't know if it's upscaling. I mean, it's the output is 640 by 480. So it's it's doubling, it's line doubling, and it doesn't really look like there's any added latency. So at least it can do line doubling, and all it is is a Raspberry Pi Pico with DVI input from the N64. This N64 project is part of a larger project called Pico DVI. So this GitHub project that Conrad has has a bunch of information related to how the Raspberry Pi Pico takes in the DVI and then does the scaling with it afterwards. I don't know that much information about actually programming a Raspberry Pi Pico, but I do know that they're, it, they are using this PIO state machine thing to get some of this DVI code to run. So that's pretty impressive because when I started to look at that, it was a little bit complicated and probably above my... Uh, programming expertise. And here is the actual N64 demo code. So if you're really interested, you could probably whip one of these up and test it yourself. But if this actually works with just a Raspberry Pi Pico and it is a high quality digital only output from the N64, I mean, that really only amplifies what Voltar was talking about with the cheap uh, Electron Shepard HDMI mod. If this would be even cheaper than that would be, and you would get all the added benefits of using an external scaler like the RetroTINK. This is just like a huge mind blow. Is that a thing? My mind, my mind is blown. <laughs> it makes me very optimistic for an all digital future. So instead of doing RGB mods in all these consoles, you could just stick a cheap, I don't know if it would be a Raspberry Pi, but the mod costs will go down and down and down until all you have is just like an HDMI port on all your consoles. And then those get wired into your RetroTINK 4K or whatever the new latest scaler is. I'm definitely super excited to hear more information about this project. I mean, just having Raspberry Pi Picos as the mod in all your consoles, I mean, that's pretty awesome and good for everybody who's on a tight budget. If you've made it this far into the video, I could really use your opinion. I've been thinking for a long time now about opening a Patreon 
And I'm just not sure if that is something that people would like to see me do to try to support me. I won't go too much more into it now, but I would like your opinion about opening up a Patreon. Just, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's it for this week, but check out this video if you want to see a new Mr. Fork that works on other FPGAs. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.